Deeply ingrained in American youth is the zest and aptitude for rugged athletics. On the playing fields, in gymnasiums, in teamwork and individual exploits have been developed attributes of body and mind. Skills and techniques which have made Americans outstanding in man-to-man -man competitions. Long trained and inspired to excel in all the virile sports and games, we've always played to win without pulling any punches but always in strict accordance of the rules of sportsmanship and gentlemanly conduct. Today, as we face enemies who recognize no fair play, the technique of man-to-man -man competition must be drastically revised to fit the tactics of war. Suspended for the duration is the code of sportsmanship. Now there is only one rule, to win. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is not a sport. It is designed for the emergency when your life may depend upon the ability to outwit or overcome an armed enemy, perhaps with only your two hands. These tactics of defense and counterattack combine the essential elements of jiu-jitsu, savat, American wrestling, and plain rough-and-tumble fighting. So first, let us examine some of the basic fundamentals. The basic body stance is one of easy balance, deceptively relaxed, yet actually always ready for quick counterattack. Arms are held lightly across the chest or spread with hands on hips. From either position, they are shifted instantly to meet an assailant's lead. Feet are slightly spread and firmly balanced. They must never be crossed, but always ready to shift or pivot according to the character of the maneuver. Blows are delivered with the knife edge of the hand to the points of greatest vulnerability. These primary vital points include the side of the neck midway between chin and ear, just under the jawbone, the larynx or so-called Adam's apple, the bridge of the nose, the upper lip just at the juncture with the nose, the back of the neck at juncture of skull and spine, the kidneys at the lower edge of the ribs, the solar plexus, which may be attacked either with the edge of the hand or with the point of the hand in a straight jab. This straight jab is well adapted to a blow at the Adam's apple or in a direct attack to the eyes. One of the most vulnerable of all vital points is the groin, where even a light blow is capable of complete incapacitation. Attack strategy utilizes the feet to stamp on an opponent's arch, to deliver a sharp blow to the shin or to the groin. The knee is also a weapon of counterattack, striking into the groin, into the face of an opponent when bent over, or into the solar plexus. Basic hand holes and leverages are designed to take greatest advantage of leverage on joints and bones. This is the wrist lock, holding the opponent's wrist in both hands. The thumbs exert pressure on the back of the hand forcing the wrist joint backward and outward at the same instant. Another primary hold is the reverse wrist lock. The opponent's hand is twisted inward. As the elbow rises, additional leverage is applied at the elbow. Any resistance on the part of the opponent only increases the pain and the effectiveness of the hold. Twisting the hand inward imposes terrific leverage on the wrist. Pressure against wrist locks the elbow. A hammer lock with the addition of downward pressure for forcing the wrist joint. In this basic headlock, one arm is passed around the opponent's neck and locked over the other arm, while one hand is utilized to control the opponent's head. Any attempt to escape only tightens the hole. Simple strategy in forcing the back is the application of leverage. With one hand holding the belt and the other applying pressure at the throat, or with one arm around the waist exerting leverage at the chin. Forcing the knee is an elementary hold which recurs in different adaptions in a wide variety of maneuvers. Breaking grips, hand holds. Simple hand holds obtained by an opponent are most easily broken, 
regardless of his physical strength, by forcing against his thumbs, either inward or outward. Slow motion photography clearly illustrates how forcing upward against the thumbs of an opponent nullifies even superior physical strength and breaks the grip. Breaking rear stranglehold with body twist. When a stranglehold is applied, it is possible to escape by means of sudden body twist with lowered head. In slow motion, it will be observed that hunching the shoulders and twisting breaks the hold, while the hands are held in a position of defense against kicks or knee blows. Breaking a rear stranglehold with thumb lock. When a rear strangle hold is applied at arm's length, the breaking hold may be applied to the thumbs. With this leverage, the assailant's grip is most easily broken, and because of its acute twisting force locking the elbow, his power of resistance is minimized. His face is brought down into effective range of a knee lift. Now in slow motion review, lock the thumbs, twist body, Knee lift to face. Breaking rear strangle with flying mare. When a strangle hold is applied from the rear, don't attempt instantly to break the hold, but insert hands over arms to get a breath and loosen the strangle. Strike him sharply in the groin with the open hand or fist. As his reaction throws him out of position, drop to the knee corresponding to the side of his approach and throw him over the shoulder with a flying mare. As he lands, the natural position of his arms and body makes it easy to apply an elbow lock. This advantage may be followed up by a vigorous attack to any part of the body. Now in slow motion, Gaining a full breath, a blow to the groin, dropping to one knee, the flying mare, the elbow lock. Breaking rear body lock with leg lift. When your hands are resting on hips, the natural inclination of an assailant is to clamp his hold inside your arms. Before he can complete his hold, lean over and seize his nearest ankle, drawing his leg up between your own. Having thus gained the initiative, follow it up by throwing him and landing with your full weight on his chest or abdomen. Now in slow motion review, seize ankle, pull up, drop on chest or abdomen. Breaking rear body lock with standing switch. In this counter, the first move is to secure your assailant's arm with your hand, then locking your left foot behind and inside his, clinch your position by getting a grip on his leg or groin with your left hand, then fall backward. With your assailant on the deck, you can choose between breaking his arm or continuing the attack to back of neck while he is immobilized by a leg spread clamp on his feet and legs. Now in slow motion review, secure the arm, note positioning of foot and leg, hand in crotch, complete switch, spread leg. Breaking rear body lock with hip lock. As the assailant clamps on his body lock, turn into him, seize his arm just above the elbow, and bring your other hand around and up to a point just below his shoulder. Stepping across in front and leaning outward, you are in a position to apply a hip lock, landing with your full weight on his chest or abdomen, and with both his arms still securely pinioned for further counterattack. 
Now, in slow motion, seize upper arm with both hands. Apply hip lock. Breaking front strangle with arm wedge. Clasp the hands firmly. Note, however, that the fingers are not intertwined. Lunge upward, striking with full power of shoulders and arms, breaking grip of assailant, and in the same continuous motion, bring down clasped hands on the bridge of his nose or other vulnerable points of the face. In slow motion photography, Observe the progressive details of the complete maneuver. Clasp hands firmly. Lunge upward. Strike blow to nose. Breaking front body lock with knee lift or foot kicks. First objective in the front body lock counter is to force assailant's body far enough away to maneuver. Then he may be thrown off balance by stamping on his arch, a sharp kick to the shin, a blow to the groin with the knee, or a combination of all. The fallen man should be approached from the rear, out of range of his feet, and to a position to continue the counterattack. Now, in slow motion review, force body away, Stamp on arch, kick to shin, blow to groin, or combination of all. Approach from rear to continue counterattack. Breaking front body lock with hip lock. In body lock counter, the assailant's arm is seized and clamped at the elbow. Your other arm is passed under and around his opposite arm at the chest. With both his arms secured, and by extending the hip and bending to the side, you are set to throw him with a hip lock, landing with your full weight on his ribs and abdomen, and in position to continue any counterattack. Now in slow motion, seize arm at elbow, Extend hip to side. Apply hip lock. Backward flip with foot to stomach. As your assailant attacks you, reach over his arms and grasp clothing firmly. Place foot in his stomach as he continues his forward motion. Fall back, kicking assailant overhead, where he drops to deck on his back. You can retain clothing grip for a stranglehold and control him for further attack. Now, again in slow motion. Grasp clothing, place foot in stomach, fall backward, kick assailant overhead, retain hold, conclude attack. Chancery against low frontal attack. As your adversary comes to you, ward him off with a stiff arm to head and throw one arm under his shoulder. Place other arm across side of face and lock his hand on the inside of your opposite elbow. Pressure upward will break the neck. A knee lift to the solar plexus can be used with a throw to the deck for further counterattack. Now again in slow motion review. Quick stiff arm. Apply chancery. Knee lift to solar plexus. Throw opponent.
arm drag. As your opponent rushes you, reach straight over and grasp your opponent's wrist. And at the same time, secure the upper arm on the underside with your other hand. Simultaneously, throw foot across opponent's instep or shin. Now fall back, pulling him over your leg to trip. Carry out further attack from rear. Now in slow motion. Secure arm. Throw leg across. Fall back, trip, conclude attack. The leg pick up. As your opponent rushes you, knock his arms out to side, step in with one knee to deck, Grasp him firmly just above the knees. With your shoulder in his stomach, raise him off the deck. Place one hand in back, keeping the other hand around his legs. And drop him to the deck on his head or neck. Conclude with knee drop, kick in ribs, or any other attack. In slow motion, knock hands to side. Secure legs, raise off deck, switch hand to back, drop to deck on head or neck, knee drop to ribs, conclude attack. The hip lock. Draw the arms of your opponent under your own. Lock his right arm with a grapevine, which places your hand between his chest and yours. Grasp his left elbow with your right hand. Cross your left leg in front of him. Bend, and using the hip as a fulcrum, heave him over. Let's see it again in slow motion. Draw opponent to you, lock the arms, step through, pull over. The reverse hip lock. In this maneuver, the right arm slips under the left shoulder and the left arm secures the elbow of your opponent. You step across him with the right foot, use the right hip as the fulcrum, and throw him over it. Again in slow motion. Secure the arms. Step behind. Here again, foot action is important. Pull over hip. The offensive wrist lock. The wrist lock is a highly versatile offensive tactic. Here it develops from an attempted one hand strangle. The hold is broken by turning the assailant's hand and forcing forward. Then the wrist lock is applied. Fingers over wrist and thumbs forcing hand back. The assailant must follow the lead of the hand or suffer a broken wrist. So, with this lead, he is easily thrown and subject to various forms of counterattack, breaking the wrist or elbow, a kick to the ribs, the solar plexus or the groin, and is held in a helpless position without use of the hands. Now, again in slow motion review. Peel off grasping hand, apply wrist lock, pull opponent to deck, Break elbow or wrist. Continue with foot attack to other vulnerable points.
the reverse wrist lock. When an assailant seizes your clothing or pushes, he is completely vulnerable to counterattack. Reach over and grip the little finger of your opponent's hand. Place other hand on his elbow for added leverage and roll the arm. As his head is forced down, clamp your elbow over his shoulder. Any resistance on his part can result only in broken bones or forced joints. You can use your foot or knee in his face if necessary. Now again in slow motion. Reach over, grasp little finger edge of opponent's hand, step in and apply pressure outward and down. Double wrist lock. Here a leg tackle is applied. Seize his wrist, straight over with your hand, slide your other hand over his arm above the elbow, and clasp your own wrist, thereby completing a double wrist lock. From this position, a natural development is a twisting hammer lock up the back with a throw backward. Now again in slow motion. Apply double wrist lock. Up back in twisting hammerlock. Throw over with a kick. Standing defense against kicks from front with leg lift and trip. In defending against kicks from the front, hold your position until the assailant starts delivering. Then quickly turn and clamp the leg, one hand over the calf, the other hand under the heel. In this position, assailant is completely off balance and helpless. Follow through by kicking assailant's standing leg from under him, at the same time hoisting his kicking leg. The resultant fall will stop the ordinary opponent. But in any case, you are in position to conclude your counterattack with the hands or knees. Quick turn, clamp leg and grasp under heel, kick standing leg and hoist kicking leg. Continue attack with hands and knees. Kneeling defense against kicks from side. From prone position, time the approach of your assailant so that when he starts to deliver the kick, Raise to your hands and knees and fall sharply in on his upright leg and clamp it with your arm. The momentum of his approach thus helps to throw him off balance. Pulling his leg under you throws him to the deck. By use of a toe hold, turn him over, slip one leg behind his knee and clamp it with a bar toe hold. In this position, little pressure is necessary to break the leg or ankle or dislocate the knee. And you can use either one or both hands to conclude the attack, as your body pressure against the foot is sufficient to hold opponent down. Now in slow motion review, raise to hands and knees, fall sharply against the knee, pull leg up and under, twisting toe hold, Bar toe hold to break the leg or ankle. Prone defense against kicks. The knee lock. As assailant advances, determine which leg will deliver the kick and start to apply knee lock to stationary leg. Hook one foot behind his heel. Strike sharply with other foot at his knee. Usually, the power of his momentum will force the knee joint. Otherwise, throw him by carrying through. When advancing to conclude the attack, use the knees to prevent him from rolling over and grabbing you. Hook one foot behind heel. Strike sharply at knee with other foot. Prone defense against kicks. Leg scissors from side. 
As assailant advances, keep the upper leg cocked for action. And as he starts to deliver the kick, swing the leg around behind his knees, thereby locking his stance. Strike downward with the top leg and upward with the under leg in a scissors motion so that his own momentum will throw him. From this position, roll up on the assailant, holding his leg locked in your own. Application of pressure will break the leg or dislocate the knee. In any case, the assailant is completely at your disposal. Now, in slow motion review, throw upper leg into position. Carry through maneuver to bar toe hold. Apply pressure. Defense against club. In defense against a club, cross the arms and step in to meet the blow. This cross defense affords the greatest certainty of meeting and arresting assailant's arm. Now watch the foot action. Turn body, grasping his arm at the forearm and shoulder, and follow through with a flying mare. On the deck, go into an elbow lock, breaking the arm at the elbow, or lead into various methods of concluding the counterattack with the knees, feet, or hands. In slow motion review, cross arms, step into blow, flying mare, Conclude attack. Defense against knife, downward thrust. The first objective is to block the knife's blow by seizing the assailant's wrist with the outstretched hand, thumb downward. Then cross the other hand under and around his arm in a reverse double wrist lock. Using your shoulder as a fulcrum, apply leverage until he drops the knife or his arm is broken. Force him to the deck and conclude the counterattack. Now in review, block arm, apply double reverse wrist lock, throw to deck, continue counterattack. Upward thrust with knife. Encountering the upward thrust, both hands form a V and are used to seize the wrist and arrest the blow. While forcing the wrist back, throw the assailant off balance by a sharp knee lift to the groin. Swing under his arm and apply a hammer lock. To force release of the knife, Apply pressure downward against the wrist, then maintain the hold for control in leading or break wrist. Now again, slow motion. Block thrust with V, knee lift to groin, turn out and apply twisting hammerlock, wrist down. Side thrust with knife. To block this maneuver, both hands are used in a V to seize the assailant's wrist. Then the right hand is slipped around the assailant's arm to gain a double wrist lock. Stepping back, this hole develops into a twisting hammer lock, exerting leverage which will tear the opponent's shoulder if he resists. When the knife grip is broken, the hammer lock can be retained with one hand while using the other to recover the knife and finish the counterattack. Now in slow motion review, block maneuver, apply double wrist lock, throw using proper leg action, and liquidate.
Club defense against night. If armed with a stout stick, wait for the thrust to expose assailant's arm, then strike at forearm. One blow should paralyze or break the arm. If not, jab sharply to the solar plexus and continue the counterattack with both stick and knife. 